Walker on to, uh, up to the stage. So can you please give a big... He tells me he's going to do his own intro, which makes life very easy for me. Uh, can you please give a big hand to John Quinn? Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, my name is John Quinn, and you know I'm a presentologist. And thank you for coming along this afternoon. Um, presentations: the visible difference between you and your competition. Yeah, how good are yours? Yeah, and we're going to, in this session, look at what is presentology. If I was to sum it up in one slide, then this is it. What do you see? Connection. Connection. Yeah, money, a deal being done. We just heard one and a half million dollars. Yeah, but at the end of the day, presentations are very often when you have to pitch an idea. Yeah, you have to get an idea across, and it can ultimately end up meaning a deal, or yeah, it could be asking somebody to marry you. It could be explaining to your kids why they can't have another iPad app. But presentations are in our lives, and we use them in many different ways. And very often, we see them used badly. And we're going to have a look at some examples of bad uses of them today. And you've seen a couple of tools that we use this morning to connect with audiences, such as Catchbox or voting tools. And we'll maybe have a play with some of those, and we'll, we'll help you sort of focus in on it. We've got a massive opportunity, if you consider some of these numbers. Can you believe it that a huge amount of people have slides and they have a PowerPoint presentation or a Prezi presentation or something that they're working on, but they haven't really reviewed it. And they don't really evolve it and move it forward. And I mean, I saw some great examples in the Matopia, Matopia presentation a moment ago of infographics and making things look better. But I saw some other things as well that I'd advise them on, for example, with maybe to do with bullet points. So we'll have a look at it. But there's a massive opportunity to grow your sales with a better presentation. There's a huge opportunity to engage the audience more and make more engagement. But yet, what do we do? Are we very often stand up here and monologue, yeah? And we feel the need to just have a one-way means of communication. Whereas if we can dialogue, it suddenly becomes a lot more interesting. So a little bit about us. Meet Peter the presenter. Peter used to give presentations like everyone else. Reading his slides, he'd bore his audiences to death with thousands of bullet points on hundreds of slides. His audience would tune out before he reached the end of his first slide. He knew he should find a better way, but just couldn't find it. Fortunately for Peter, he discovered Audience Alive. Now Peter focuses on the three steps to bring his audience alive. One, Peter works on making his content compelling with storytelling, infographics and visuals. Two, he's also developed his delivery using body language, props and visualization. Three, and Peter now has improved audience interaction using engagement tools such as live polling and catchbox. Peter has banished death by PowerPoint and his audiences love him for it. If you'd like to be like Peter, get in touch with us at www.audiencealive.com. So that's a video explainer, yeah? Noah, anybody made them before? Have you had a go at making one? Can you make one yourself? Free of charge? Yes, you can. I'll show you how you can do, make one of those and how you can put it together. So it's a great way of getting a quick message across. And there are different ways and different areas that you can do those. So 
a little bit about me, as you can hear, Belfast, born in Belfast, 1968, into the war-torn troubles of Belfast. My father worked for the BBC, so it was eventual likely that I was going to end up working in media somehow and kind of getting involved. I went to the Middle East in uh, 2000, well, 95 originally, and also to New Zealand in 2000 and kind of fell in love with here. So moved between uh, the two cities, Dubai and Queenstown, and they're kind of not, not mutually exclusive and a bit of a strange extreme to each one. But over the years, we've made an awful lot of slides, so for a lot of different companies, yeah? So it really ranges across a whole broad range, and I'd like to show you some of those today, show you some good examples and also some bad examples as we go through. Look, this is my first ever presentation, and this is in 1978, 10 years old, wanted to read the news in the BBC, and this is arguably my first ever presentation, so let me show it to you and tell me what you think. A big disappointment for John Watson, my mother sticks in my hair. racing driver. He, the 1970s colours. He likes, he likes leading the field in, in this afternoon's French Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. At, at, Dijon. at Dijon. At Dijon, when about I'll spare the rest yeah. of it, okay? Yeah. It wasn't very good. Was it very good? No, it wasn't very good, okay? So look, no one is born a great presenter, yeah? You can learn to present better. You can learn to do what I'm doing now, stand here with confidence, present in a, in a proper voice, give, give the information across. It's a skill that you can do, you can learn, and then you can go and practice it. Where's the best place to practice it? Toastmasters. Any Toasties here? Welcome. Thank you. I'm president of Toastmasters Queenstown, and it's the best place to go. If you want to keep practicing, if you want to keep practicing this skill, we learn still stuff all the time. We're never, we're a club for poor presenters who are trying to be better. That's what Toastmasters is. So go along and join your local chapter. It makes a big impact, and we're changing rapidly as we move into 2018 with the new launch of Pathways, which is a multiple set of routes that you can go down. If you just want to focus on delivering eulogies because you've got one to do, then you you can just focus on that. If you want to work on better visual media, you can also focus on that. So I've worked with a lot of different people over the years, and probably the guy in the bottom left-hand corner is the guy that had the most impact on me. I got a month with him, traveling around the Middle East, instead of getting Virgin going, and he gave me a little sort of pearl of wisdom one evening, sitting in a, in a bar, and we were just chilling out, having a chat with him, and I asked him, so Richard, you know, what really it would be your advice for a young guy like me trying to start his, start his own business? And he used an old Alan Carr quotation, and it goes something like this. The greatest risk in your life is to spend your time not doing what you want on the bet that you can buy yourself the time to do it later. And it had quite a big impact on me, and I thought, yeah, I know, I want to, number one, I can see why you're the leader of, of the company you are, but I went off and did the stuff that I really want to do. I went off and tried to do as much fun stuff as I could, and it dragged me in part down to Queenstown where I kind of threw myself down mountains and had lots of fun. But the most challenging thing I ever did are these two guys, Cara on the left and Aaron on the right. Any, I assume there's a few parents here, but uh, Aaron was about to run out in the road in Glenorchy one day, and I reached out with my voice and tried to drag him back. Come back here, you know, and you kind of, we very often don't use our voice when we present in a, in, a, in a different way. But Cara, when she was a baby, I was leaning in the pram one day and I said to her, look, your dad's a presentologist, you're probably going to be presenting lots. And she is now at school. And that was the face I got. And I thought that face kind of sums up presenting generally, doesn't it? Inside us, when we're asked to stand up, he's got this little child inside us that goes, no, please don't make me do it. So fear is a major uh, challenge for people. And again, Toastmasters is a great place to practice, but there are virtual reality solutions you can use now. For example, Samsung have an app called Audience that takes you through different scenarios and gets you immersed into practicing it. So there are, there's a, with the VR headset and you can practice and use that. So that's, that's one of the things you can do to help you with fear. And there they are last week down in Queenstown um, with a new puppy introducing it. So how are we going to, what are the main takeaways that we're gonna focus on and try and get across to you today? Well, we're going to look at some of the main mistakes people make. Then we'll look at three lovely numbers to identify with presentations. I'll try and give you seven tips and things that you can take away and start working on your slides right away, and we'll do some of those resources. So one of the things that we like to do is to use a word cloud of what people want to learn from a session like this. And this is a typical example. So this is made in Word, Wordle, and it's a nice way of getting rid of lists of bullet points, yeah? So wordle.net is one of the places you can make something like this. The larger words are the words that are more frequent. 
You can use tools to create more engagement, such as Catchbox. You, you saw that in use this morning, so I don't really need to play the video. You understand how, what, how it works. But you know, that, that was a product, a finished product, the two guys who just looked at a problem that's at events and thought, why don't we just make this better? And believe it or not, there is a poor competition, a competitor product that they've made in a rugby ball. And we all thought, oh, let's go for that. That's a great idea. But the mic falls out, and it doesn't switch off when you throw it in the air. And it's cheaper, but it doesn't work as well. So you know, Catchbox, these guys invented a product that works really well. This is a stage mic. And this is an audience mic. The problem with the stage mics is that they were designed to be used on the stage. So when a member of the audience needs a microphone, this happens. So they're trying to solve that problem and move, move forward with it. So this is the formula that most people use when they're creating a great presentation. Yeah, they think it's going to be great, but that's generally what happens. Yeah, so we end up with boredom in terms of how we get the message across. Well, if we just add another element into it, which is interaction, then suddenly you work on the content and work on how you deliver it, and it improves. It. Now, before we look at the good stuff, we need to look at that. I want you all to promise me you will never, ever use this again, OK? <laughs> What's it called? Word art, OK? We don't use it anymore. The fact you know it means that you've used it somewhere. So delete the slides that are in there. The common mistake that people make is they tend to put every word they're saying on their PowerPoint slide. Although it eliminates the need to make your, to read, you have to read your slides, and it makes your slides crowded, wordy, boring, and you lose your audience's attention. So the number one mistake that people hit is reading your slides. You need to work with your slides and not read what's up there, okay? The worst thing you can do is put up 10 bullet points and start reading the first one. The audience hate you, okay? They tangibly hate you. If I and I am developing an app, Julia said, "What? Are, what next?" We're developing an app called Meeting Pulse. Where we've got four little buttons on there, from happy to sad. And if you press sad, then it tells me up here that you're sad, okay? Because the audience need to feedback. They need to give some more feedback. These are the top ten things we hear amateurs saying. Um, if you hear yourself up here, or if any of these, you say any of these, then please stop it. Okay, stop complaining about the size of the text. Please stop complaining about how much time you have left. It's up to you to know how much time you have. This is called spot, uh, Spotlight. It's a new type of remote control, and it has haptic controls, so it's buzzing at me, telling me how long I've got left. So you get feedback as you're going through it. Yeah. So work through it and try not to use any of those really kind of dodgy words. The one that I, I use quite a lot is obviously, clearly, basically. So please don't copy how many basically's I say, but I do do a lot of basically. Please check the spelling in your presentation. Yeah, there's a red line under it. Stop presenting spelling mistakes. You can tank real bad if you've got a lot of spelling mistakes. Now, the next challenge for you is as of today, I would like to challenge you all that you will never, ever use a round black dot next to some text ever again. We need to ban the bullet. This is a, this is a man from Belfast telling you to ban the bullet, OK? All right? You need to be bulletproof. We need to get rid of the bullet. Why? Because that round black dot or that white dot beside your text immediately tells everybody it's a PowerPoint slide. We immediately recognize it. It's a cliche in PowerPoint. Now, I want to give you a tool later on for getting rid of that. We're simply going to turn them into infographics. We're going to get rid of the black dot and add an icon. And we're going to look at how we get them and where we get them from. And that's the simplest thing. And you saw that. If you remember back to the Motopia slide, there was one about facts and it had icons all the way across the top. And that's what we need to be doing with slides. That's what we need to be making them simpler and making mo more interesting. If you don't believe me that bullets don't work, the best way that I can prove it to you is to shut up and let you quickly read this slide. Go for it. Read. <laughs> don't tell me you can't. I do want you to read it. There's a real message in, the, in all of these points, especially as you get further down them. You know. Prezi, it uses a mind mapping concept. And the brain doesn't think linearly. Yet we seem to think that this is the right way to do it. And if you read these points, you'll see that by the time you get down to three quarters of the way down, you're not really remembering the points. Yeah? It's more a script for you. And that's not what we want to do. We want to try and make it more engaging by presenting you know, not in a non-linear fashion. The bottom point is, should be the hardest hitting. If you really don't care, if you really just want to write, read your slides, then stick to bullet points. But the brain does not think in text. The brain thinks in images. Do you not believe me? Close your eyes and think of your mobile phone number backwards in your mind. 
pretty tough, your mobile phone number backwards in your mind. And while you're thinking of your mobile phone number backwards, think of a blue tree, a blue tree. And now ask yourself, which is easier? The brain is much better at a blue tree than numbers because you're spelling out the numbers in your mind. So we want to use more imagery. I know you've heard a picture speaks a thousand words, but why don't we use them? Why don't we use them more often? And we can look at how we can do that. Colors, please watch out for colors. In this case, the projector is not too bad and you can't actually see it, but it can cause a lot of problems. So please try to use high contrasting colors. You see that Matopia again, they use black background. That's good. The worst color for the background is white because that's the standard PowerPoint background. Don't use a white background, yeah? And don't use images in the background that you can't see or that are hard to see. We'll have a look at some good examples in a moment. If you're still using these, then really you need this, okay? Please stop <laughs> using clip art, okay? It is the sign of the amateur, especially those two guys over on the right-hand side called the screen beans, they are gone, okay? So no more clip art. Where can you find images? We can advise on that and we can help you with that. Fonts, please make your fonts legible. You won't believe how many people put effort into a, a presentation and we see terrible use of fonts. Poor use of fonts, poor use of graphics. We're after sans serif fonts, simple to read, like the ones like Arial, like Tahoma, yeah? So that you can send, it, send them across. Sentence case, please be real careful with sentence case. It can cause a huge problem if you get it wrong. Yeah, check out your sentences. Capitals are real important, okay? <laughs> what about these two guys? Have you seen these before? Have you seen these before? Do you recognize them? Everybody's seen them, they're PowerPoint cliches. The arrow, everyone's seen it. Please do not choose it for your presentation. It says it's PowerPoint and it's boring and I choose the default in PowerPoint. That's what they all say. You must design it in another way. So those are some of the problems. The last one is the person who spends all night or all day thinking, let's over animate everything. Let's make it really cool and fly around and then it'll be really cool and it'll get the information across. The one they spend all day working on is this one, the swivel. Oh, look, I made it swivel. Look, it's not cool. It's not cool. It's cheap and it's overly animated, okay? So we want to add animations, but we don't want to do these cheap and nasty animations. So hopefully I've identified all the problems for you now, and we can start looking at how we can do it better. You know, the time is getting less that we have. We typically do not have an hour to present to people. We typically have this to present to people. And where does it come from? Well, I th like to think that 20 minutes comes from this graph. It's an interesting graph from the 70s. Notice that at 40 minutes through a meeting, everybody gets more engaged. Why? Because it's going to end. And the presenter says, so in summary. So if you're presenting, summarize more often because the audience will pay attention when you summarize. Yeah? It also could come from this guy. Yeah? Guy Kawasaki, one of, uh, he's a venture capitalist and at an outburst, he had this outburst at a meeting one day where he talks about the 10, 20, 30 rule of PowerPoint or presenting. And, if you don't remember anything from this session, then please try to remember these three numbers because they will change your presentations. This is it. This is the 10, 20, 30 rule. You should have 10 slides in your PowerPoint pitch. 10, not 50. I don't care if you have curve jumping, paradigm shifting, P2P, Google AdWords, social network, optimized, SQL-based way to sell dog food online. 10 slides, that's all we can handle. Those 10 slides you should be able to give in 20 minutes. You may have a one hour meeting, but you're using a Windows laptop. It's going to take you 40 minutes to make it work with the projector. <laughs> right? 20 minutes. And the smallest font you should use is 30 points. You see 20, 14, and 12. You should use 30 points for two reasons. First, the kind of people you're pitching to looks like that. The second reason is by having a 30 point font, you can put a lot less text. This forces you to actually know your presentation and just put the core of the text on your slide. If you need to put eight points or 10 points fonts up there, it's because you don't know your material. If you start reading your material because you don't know your material, the audience is very quickly going to figure out that you are a bozo. <laughs> They're gonna to say to themselves, this bozo is reading his slides. I can read faster than this bozo can speak. I will just read ahead. If you don't buy that 30 points is the right font size, I will give you an algorithm. 
give you an algorithm. Find out who the oldest person is in the audience, divide his or her age by two. That's your optimal font size. Okay? Unless you're pitching to 16 year olds, don't use the 8 point font. Okay, pretty straightforward, yeah? So 10, 20, 30, we'll come back to it later. So let's have a look at some of the problems. I mean, I'm in events, so I, I came up with this whole company idea because I heard of an I experienced death by PowerPoint and I've seen it. And when you're looking at, at audiences, um, you know, there's a lot of ne negativity around it. This guy's He's not dead, but he is pretty much fast asleep. Um, this is a conference in Dubai. He has one of our voting keypads in his hand. And when we asked him a question, he woke up and voted and then went back to sleep again. So he is at the back of a room of 450 people and he's asleep at the back of his own event because he's the CEO of the company and it's a large company. That's how bad it is. That's how bad presentations are. This guy, why did I take a picture of this guy? He's the definition of lastminute.com. He is working on slide number four and he has no others. And he's about to walk on the stage in about 15 minutes. So he's still making his PowerPoint presentation. So part of our instinct is to leave things to the last minute. Procrastination kills presentations. Simon here, who works with me, gets constant requests. I think the last time was from two degrees for 480 slides for next week. How can you do that? Yeah, a whole conference of slides to convert them all. So, for example, people do leave it to the last minute. So you want to try and get ahead of yourself and not leave things to the last minute. And this lady came all the way from Texas to Dubai and brought her own entertainment. Yeah. You can see there. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand. My granny tells me you can knit now, but you can concentrate. But I asked her, why are you knitting? in a conference and she said, look, hell, honey, it's just so damn boring. The content is terrible. And these are real slides from real customers. Everything I'm showing you now is PowerPoint. PowerPoint itself, no plugins, no nothing. Everything you're seeing is PowerPoint. What's wrong with this? Poor use of fonts, poor use of graphics, yeah? Poor use of all color, everything, yeah? And this is a real slide. Can you make it better? I said, hell yes, we can delete it and start again. <laughs> They asked me, what can you do with this? And the CEO, if you look hard enough, you'll see who it is. The IT industry are some of the worst. And the CEO said to me, I said, you're not taking this externally, are you? This is an internal document. He said, no, these are all lines of business and how we, how we communicate. And I said, but look, yeah. I said, you, you can't take this externally. He said, well, what do you think they get from it? And I'm like, well, like, Smarties and M&Ms? I mean, like, it's just lost. The information's lost. And to, so sometimes you're looking so closely at something you can't see how bad it is, you know? So it's a matter of listening to audiences. Audiences have had enough. Literally people are walking out of the room or they're just leaving or they're tuning out or you may You know, you may find it. The, it. the hardest place to present in the world, I would say, is Saudi Arabia. I haven't presented. There. And the reason why is that they're very respectful, but if you're boring, they just all, all get up and leave. <laughs> the whole room. They've got no Victorianism in them. They won't stay and be polite. They will quietly leave the room and go and drink tea. So I've seen some boring engineer standing on a stage and they him and talking about talking about an engineer and two people sitting in the room and everybody else is out drinking tea. If you're good and you're present well, they'll love you. So they're a great audience. They're a really honest audience. Everybody comes to us looking for this, the wow factor. I want the wow factor. Give me the wow factor in my presentation. Does anybody know what the wow factor is? Any, any suggestions? 
The wow factor for us as designers is if we can get one person in the audience to feel something or to say wow, then we've done our job. You're trying to create that wow factor when you deliver something. So would you like me to t tell you seven different tips that you can go back and you can start working on some of these slides? And let's look at some real examples. Would you like me to do, show you a few of those? So first and foremost, please respect your brand. Yeah, you spent a fortune on it, yeah? It's a brilliant and beautiful brand. Do not stick it as I have in the corner there and leave it in the corner. Do something nice with your brand. Do not do this with it, which is where it's not on there at all, and you end up with a slide like this. It's given to us that we have to turn away and do something better with. And this is all PowerPoint. So what we've done here is we've used some animations within PowerPoint to create something that looks a bit more, that introduces the brand and gets the message across before we get into the actual slides. Work on breaking up the brand to tell the story of the brand so that it comes across and it creates information and interest in your brand before you put it in the corner if your corporate branding says you have to put it in your corner. But make sure you do some work on it beforehand and you introduce it. Maybe introduce it with an element, yeah? Create an element that looks good, that kind of gets the message across if you're gonna use some, some element on the slide. This was for a, a conference that we created. And that's using the, the, uh, one of the animations within PowerPoint to flick it around. So with a bit of creativity, you can do something like that. Introducing the brand with maybe I'm creating the design of the actual slides from the brand by, by moving the slides around and creating it. And can I reiterate that everything you're looking at is PowerPoint 2010. There is no plugins for this. This is just 80% perspiration and 20% inspiration. And we'll have a look at how we do it as well. So the logo and the brand is one of the first things we try to work on. Then we also try to work on sticking to three. I see people talking about seven things or 20 things or 10 things. Please stick to three. Three is all around us, yeah? Three wise men, three little pigs, musketeers. What else, Goldilocks and the three bears? There weren't six bears, there were three bears, yeah? So try to focus in on three, because we love three, and in scripture and in marketing, it's all around us as well. There are three traffic lights. I still am yet to find out an absolute psychological reason why three is perfect, but let me tell you that three resonates with people. People love it. For example, this company who just sold their business for $7 million in Dubai just presented this slides, which were just three things that they did. They did an awful lot more than three things, but they just focused on those three things that they did. So a PowerPoint presentation can help you win a deal, close a deal, and I'll show you a few other million dollar slides as we go along. So that's talking about their DNA. That's a little infographic down the bottom with some movement. And this is a movement moving the image and zooming it in, and then some text. A bit too much text in my view, but it's still getting the message across. So try to focus on three things you're gonna offer. It could be three lots of seven. It could be three lots of three. Then we try to get rid of some of those nasty cliches that I mentioned to you earlier on. Yeah, so we're trying to get rid of the look and feel of this and turn it into something a bit more like this. So we see the first slide as a PowerPoint slide, yeah? because of the shape, yeah? And we see this slide as being something much more interesting. Now you can remove the background from the picture in PowerPoint. You don't need to go to Photoshop. I see a lot of people putting square images on a white background or a black background. PowerPoint allows you to edit and change the slides. You can actually do them in PowerPoint. It's called Picture Background Removal Tool and you can draw around it and edit it. We can have a look at that if you like uh, later on. What else can you do? You can add some infographics get rid of the bullet points, and try to make things more interesting with infographics. So this is a good, nice looking slide, but it's a little bit over the top. There's a little bit too much information on it. So what did we do to it? We broke it down and we turned it into a design. So design some element, create a slide, some slide that works with it, that tells the message of the slides, and then maybe create some movements and design. And those are all lines, wipes. That's a wipe animation in PowerPoint, and that's just one of those points. And we notice this changing, you know? Big infographics, big simple statements, very easy to make. Where do you get something like that brain? That's an infographic from something like flaticon.com. So this is completely free, free of charge icons that you can just put into your PowerPoint slides. So any other examples? Has anyone else used another infographic supplier? There's a qu there's quick pick, which you can put right into PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, there's a little area of PowerPoint called the uh, store, and you can go in there, and there's a whole range of free stuff from Microsoft that you're not using right within the store. So insert 
from the store pictures, quick pick, and you've got free images that you can put right into PowerPoint and use them as you go along. Also trying to make slides like this, which have got more infographic elements to them, that gets rid of a lot of bullet points instead of bullet points, or tell a story with PowerPoint. Here's a CEO and he's talking about how, how change can create a, a difference, how if we give, for example, a Maasai warrior an old Mo Nokia mobile phone, he has access to more information than this guy. If we give him a smartphone, he has access to more information than this guy. So don't tell, don't see PowerPoint as flat and two-dimensional. Try and animate the stories and tell a story with your slides because then it makes a, an impact. And you can see here we've mixed together, the road is a picture which we've cut out the background and these are some infographics with, along with the hand as well. So infographics can make a big difference to your slides. Then maybe try something different. We see people not really defining where they've come from and who they are and not using a timeline. You've spent a lot of time on your brand and, and on your business, so tell your story. Create a story. This should be one of your first slides, a timeline of where you've come from and where you're going to, if you like, as well. So this is a PowerPoint slide. There's 150 elements on it. It took a week of work, but it's a PowerPoint slide. It's not a video. You can save it as a video and put it on YouTube. So again, PowerPoint is a brilliant video authoring tool. You can make videos from PowerPoint. And I'm talking about all versions of PowerPoint. Mac, everything from Windows 2010. But you would spend a long time doing this in bullet points. But it gets the message across in a smooth way and tells a story which you can talk over. So having timelines and just maybe using some of the animation within PowerPoint to use a timeline. This is, uh, for example, the push animation where you push something up and you talk about your timeline. Very easy to build and to put together. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of you are going to turn into graphic designers overnight, but you can talk to people who who work on this type of stuff to create it and they can build it out for you and help you do it. Adding media, we're trying to use more and more media in our slides, yeah? Please try to bring more media in. Go and get video, as you've seen the guys use earlier at Mod Modtopia. My only advice there is to not refer to video as let me play you a video. Let me introduce you to Jim. Meet Peter. Look at what we've done. Don't say, can I play you a video? I would like to play you a video now. And video can be... in the background as it is here. This is a video in the background. And you can use video as an element within your slide. You can get, you know, I, I watched somebody trying to animate the clouds moving in the background and I said, just go and get, get it from YouTube. And there are free clip art videos of a sky which you can put in the background and then put text on top of it. Try it, it works real well in PowerPoint. Put the video in the background and and then put the information on top, then move on and tell your message or tell your story. So that's, uh, that's one use of media, but also audio. Audio is a great tool as well. And lastly, if you're going to pitch to Korea, if you're going to pitch to a company in China, please make sure you're presenting in their language. It costs 20 bucks to get these slides converted into Arabic, the titles, yeah? That's all it costs. Yeah, the guy won a $7 million order in Saudi Arabia with these slides, with 15 slides. Is it worth investing $10,000 in it? It is. Is it worth investing $2,000? It is. Yeah, it's worth investing. When you present, present in English with Arabic on the slides. Major impact for the, for the people at the other end. They love it. You've respected them, you've respected their, their culture, and you're presenting in their language. It doesn't cost very much to do that. Present by bilingual slides when you're traveling, and you'll see the impact when, you, when it happens. Here's an example. of something which Dubai Tourism use to advertise in the, in the airport. When people arrive and this, video, this plays as a video, it's, they call it a video, it's made in PowerPoint. So PowerPoint is one of the most underused tools and resources. 
resources that are out there. Yeah, people are kind of using one little bit of it and sticking some bullet points in. If you expand your horizons and start clicking around and looking at some of the other things you can do, insert video, or if necessary, get us to come along and give you some training on it, and you can learn how to do it. And we have a whole range of free training courses that we run that are online, teaching people how to do it and how to change. So those are the seven tips that I have, a couple of, couple of extra ones, because we always get the cheaters. Let's find something, a, a nice way to cheat. Let's dump PowerPoint. It's too hard, let's try something else. Well, here's one. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it works very well on an iPad. It's called Vidra. Um, this is myself and my daughter on the beach in Sri Lanka, and we made this video in literally 10 seconds, it kind of, or 10 minutes. You, you kind of just put, type in the text, it does all the movements and animations for you, and she just recorded, I recorded her voice, and she talked over the top of it. But literally, it's child's play making something like this, and you can make it, it's free, it's free of charge. Yeah, just go to Vidra, download the app on your iPad, have a play with it, type in some text, and away you go, and you can build a, a storyline like that. So that's one. Powtoon, Powtoon's around, been around a while now. Again, it's a free video explainer tool for making your own video explainers. You can make really cool animations and, and presentations in there. All of the movements are all created for you. What they've done very nicely is if you put in an object, there's an animation that's associated with it. So it's object-based animation. So you don't have to animate something, it animates when you put it in. So that's Powtoon, and of course Prezi. Anyone tried Prezi? A few little hands going up there, yeah, okay. Some people trying it at school. Look, just be careful. You can end up with stuff like this. It's, it's good, but my challenge with it is what we call audience nausea, yeah? So where there's too much zooming and motion involved and it can over confuse people. And you can't really send it to somebody. PowerPoint is the de facto standard around the world, so we try to work better in PowerPoint. That's what people are working in. So Prezi is also nice. Don't be afraid now to play as well, okay? So try to create gamification. And these are um, 12 different examples of gamification in your meetings when you're having meetings and events. Um, please join the Meeting Design Institute. They're based in Belgium, and we're pushing these types of ideas out. Anybody recognize any of them? They're all on our website, and people don't play with them enough. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, Pecha Kucha is great fun. Unconference is so much fun. We've seen people breaking in the room, where you have breakouts within the room. Um, we've seen people having debates, or having a debate, and, and creating a debate. And I wanted to give you a couple of examples, but you know, create, acting out a scene. I've seen people do that before, where they act out a scene. But it's a great way of getting a message across. So, add some animation, some movement. There are too many millionaires in Dubai, so we had to play um, Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? Habibi, what is a million is nothing. I have million too much. Money. Only, only one billion is interesting to me. So a quiz. This is gamifying. Yeah. So we grew this company's profits by 80% by playing a quiz. It's for pharmacists, and they come out and they, we built a nice stage. The pharmacists come along, are given a keypad, and they play essentially what is a TV style quiz. Yeah. So they feel like they're at a at a TV show. And the whole thing is run like a TV show in terms of the questions, but the questions are all about the corporate. They're all about the products. They have to know about the skincare products and they have to know the answers to the products and they get involved. And there was an older gentleman who I noticed that day and look, he, was, he probably woke up in a small village on the other side of the United Arab Emirates and his staff told him, Ali, you know, we're going to go and play this quiz today. And he's a pharmacist. And I don't think when Ali woke up that morning that, I, that he thought that he would be doing this in the afternoon. If you employ gamification at your events, then you better be ready for this. And he thought he was just going to a meeting, and he's like having so much fun, you know what I mean? So gamification basically turns your event into something like dramatic, fun, everybody having fun. And they're just like, this is a meeting, yeah? So that's what gamification will do. So don't be afraid to have a play with it. It's so much fun if you, if you bring, an, bring some game or some element of quiz or gamification into it. Some of them, you know, are better than others. Yeah, you can see I had long hair at one stage, but this is a very entertaining event, which, uh, which I went to in a very remote village on the other side of, uh, of, of the United Arab Emirates. And I was amazed to see how serious everybody was about it. They had footballs, and the footballs had to be very, very hard. And I was wondering why, and then the guy came out with a soft football and tried to kick it, and it didn't go anywhere. And so you get where we're going with the whole football. But somebody came up with it, and it was a, it was a, it was a great event. 
event. This is the Arabian travel market where we're playing a game of Pecha Kucha. So Pecha Kucha is 20 slides in 20 seconds. So each of the four presenters have to present 20 slides in 20 seconds. They're gamified because the audience are going to choose which of them is the winner. So that's the presenter's game. Gamified. The audience are very definitely gamified because if you look closely you'll see that the Maldives are presenting and they're giving away a free trip to the Maldives to the winner in the audience who pays attention. So both win-win situation where you've got the audience gamified and the presenters gamified using something like Pecha Kucha. So that's a great way to do it. So that's just trying to move things from being this over to being this. So we're trying to create that engagement level to help to move things along. And you can create en engagement on the slide. So for Luz, Danny, Luke, who travels around the world, he can't go through all of the different places that Skyline R here that the Luge is. So he clicks on one of these and tells you more about it. So you can make your slides interactive and that will help and improve the interactivity. You've got to remember that that's the reason why we're going to do some interaction later on and we're going to do some networking later on. People are at your event to do this and you really need to respect that because that's really important. You can see that here's some of the other numbers that make an impact. That's a recent number from last year from uh, an event, the future of the meetings industry in Australia. And I picked up on it right away. Can you believe that? That's a big number. That means you put on your top table at the stage, you put five people on the stage and you ask the audience who, who wants who to talk about what. So you flip the whole thing around instead of programming your content, you let the audience choose what the presenters are going to present. So you can use something like that, or you could use Catchbox as an idea. Uh, Poll Everywhere is completely free of charge for those of you who want to get a soft way into presenting uh, and creating interaction. If you go to polleverywhere.com, you can sign up for a free account for 25 people. It makes your questions on your slides interactive. So you can have interactive slides, and there's a few others that are around as well. So I hope I've uh, kind of helped you look at that a little bit and look at some of the mistakes. We looked at 10, 20, 30, 20 is? 20 minutes, no font size less than 30, yeah? Go back, have a look at your slides. If there's 10 point font on there, you got trouble. And we looked at some, uh, some content. If you would like any of the slides, would anybody like the slides from today, then please just go along to this little website and give us some feedback with that flashing cursor. Um, so you go to aalive.mobi, which is our own little survey website, and you can download the slides. We'll send you the slides through. If you just fill up the flashing red one, which is a, a little survey where we ask for your email address, then we'll send it. We'll make sure we send the slides through to you. So just give us some feedback on, on what we can do better. So thank you. In my last 16 seconds, I'd really like to say if you think about it, you don't buy a newspaper, you buy news. You don't really buy glasses, you buy vision. You don't really buy a mattress, you buy sleep. And you don't really buy a lamp, you buy light. Well, if you use presentology, you're not really buying a presentation, you're buying applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Too early, too late? Are we good? Any questions? No, you're all, you're done. You're, yeah? So if you don't, um uh, what's the best way to someone in the team or a colleague who actually wants to get better presentations? I mean, uh, yeah, the, the, two, the two sites would generally are the personal presentation and the content. So normally in a company there are people who are doing the graphics and are maybe turning out the graphics and we do what we call with them an MPA, Master PowerPoint Animator. We teach them to animate more in PowerPoint and that's a, that's a course that we run for five to ten people at once and we take them all through the slides over a day or two days and show them the skills that we have. And then the personal presentation, we, teach, we take, take each of those people and watch them deliver and roast them, give them feedback, give them tips, but we also very much advise they go along and join Toastmasters to practice that and, and get involved. But we do do a one day course where we teach people how to get up and present more and present more effectively. So those are generally the two ways we get involved. We're running a whole series of online webinars in the coming months as well, which if you, again, if you fill in that survey, we'll give you, we'll give you some links to those as well, some updates on how to do it. But by all means, get in touch if there's anything we can do. We're around for the next day. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and investing the time. If there's no other questions, have a great afternoon. Thank you.
Thank you.